Hello, welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. We're getting on with the, um, with the, uh, the Ring City DLC. We're getting through the Dreg Heap. So a little bit of Dark Souls 3 and then a little bit of Dark Souls 2 here. This guy we definitely cannot jump on top of, so. Which is why I want to fight as few of these as possible this way. Because you have to fight so many anyway. Ugh. And you have to fight a lot of them. Delays. I mean, that's one I probably should have known about, but. That seems like a standard move set. Methodical. Loincloth. Undergarments combined with an overlayer, the former never intended for public display. Indeed, all manner of things are bound to accrue at world's end. Okay. And there's just a lot of good uh, items here. And it's easy to grab them all when we don't have the angel shooting at us. <coughs> oh man. <coughs> man, I feel like it's gonna be hard. Do not cough. Desert Pyromancer gloves. I don't believe those say anything different. It is said that the thing, yeah. They have what looks like a, like a dead birch tree here or something. I'm already poisoned. Um, yeah, I'm up here. Ring of favor three. Chunks. Um, so there's nothing really in here. Um, <coughs> there is the treasure that um, Lap spoke of, um, but uh, we're going to assume that he grabbed it. Er, spoilers. <laughs> I guess the spoiler is that I think I'm going to die. Um, but we'll see. If I don't die, I'll go grab it. But, um... This enemy is quite difficult for me. Prism stones. I want to grab these thralls without grabbing her. Okay, good. 
All right, so now Zoe, let me try to fight. She can heal a lot. She can do her flame fan. Uh, we'll probably just let her heal just because Look, who knows, maybe it's just like, I'll take this and no problem, but... Okay, yeah, she's out now. Great. Nice. Get a flame fan. Pyromancy. Pyromancer of Zoe, descendant of the desert pyromancers, used repeatedly to brush the fan of flame left and right. Zoe possessed true beauty and did all the desert as did all the desert pyromancers, but hers did not poison, and so she became the unassuming queen of the feeble ones. Which is kind of an ironic state for her to to get because um <laughs> the previous queen of those desert pyromancers, I guess for lack of a better word. Um, was uh, the one that was poisoned for her beauty. So I guess it's kind of irony. Okay, it all says the same thing, and we got the whole set. All right, now let me tell you, running on this with uh, all, like, the uh, angel here and the angel over there, not fun. If not even possible. It's potential it's not even possible. Um, okay, so yeah, now we come down here. And we go to this is the within the earthen peak ruins. But let's go to the earthen peak ruins. You know, who knows, maybe uh, maybe we don't have to die. Hmm. Um. Past here. If I will. What if I um? What if I go back and then come back? I just want to see if I can trigger this because I think this is actually a you know a lore <laughs> issue. Um, okay. I wonder if it matters where I die. I'm going to die in a place I can get my, uh, Souls back easily. Okay, good. I was like, if that starts the, the boss battle, I could just die to the bosses, I guess. But... Okay. See if that was sufficient. Yes. Okay. Oh, there you are. Perfect timing. You remember that treasure in the thick of the poison swamp? Well, I fetched it for you, as promised. Oh, there was only a hop and a skip. I needed a rest from old Nan over there. Here, go ahead. It's yours. Maybe it'll help you with that solemn duty of yours. 
This really is a dream. So yeah, I just love that because, of course, that's not the Patch's way of doing things. And, you know, while playing this the first time, I, w I wasn't, like, doing a deep lore through or anything, but I was talking to everyone and trying to get everything and whatever. And so it was cool to, like, um, um, like, that really, <laughs> that really tickled me. So who can we summon? We can summon Slave Nightgale. I think we can summon Lap. Amnesiac Lap. Um, but I might take this on alone. Um, I don't know, it depends. Um, how it goes, I suppose. I think I should be able to take care of it pretty easily. I'm pretty good with this fight, or I was. Um, however, the final, the final uh, thing can be a uh, hit or miss. So we'll try it. Also, I need anti-toxic just in case, which I don't have. And it's worth getting. Because, I mean, if you get toxic during the fight, I mean, I guess that's just like you did. <coughs> but why not protect? I don't know how much toxic we can buy. Or blooming. Uh, oh. Infinity. Well, let's grab like ten. Like that's a lot. Ashen one. All right. And then let's put them here. Okay, here we go. All right, let's do this. Let's fight the Demon Prince. I don't know if you can roll after this. Yeah, you can, nice. So both, so we want to kill this guy last. Okay, so now they're both fire, so that means we get away. And I don't know how that, I did that. Oops. Okay, one of them has to not become inflamed. There he goes, okay. So this is the guy we want to kill first. Oh my gosh. They are so close to each other. I'm not hitting any other stuff. Oh, I almost got toxic there. Oh, there it is. Nice. Glad I have this. That would have been my death. I don't really see this very often that they're both the uh, unflamed. <clears throat> ok 
Okay, so we want to kill the one that's... Ooh, that was not good. I'm gonna kill this one, so let's just kill him now. I'm out of stamina. Oh, they block each other, that's cool. Okay, so he's dead, which is good. So now, we just have to deal with the one. Oops. Okay. Doing well on Estus. And of course, as one might suspect, suspect that's not the uh, <coughs> that's not the whole battle. Now the real battle comes, but this is the easier of the two battles. Although it can still be a little bit draining of your health. Yeah, he shoots out fire trail after most of his actions. You gotta be careful of that. Okay, so now this is where he'll do his like laser. And I did not do that right. Way too slow. Got that. That can be a good drain of health. Okay. I don't know how much that hurts. Okay, it's not bad. Oh boy, I'm surprised that didn't do more damage to me. Okay, stunned him again. And that's it. That's all she wrote for the Demon Prince. Nice. So apparently Prince Lorian did that, <clears throat> at least that second part of the battle. Who knows what the first part of the battle was. In fact, I think they had a, a, a beta of the Ring DLC and they had people fight the second one only and not the first two. A little bit of a surprise when people got their hands on it. So let's take a look at the Demon Prince. Um, the demons birth from a common chaos share almost everything between them even the pride of their prince uh, and his near faded flame so that the last demon standing may rekindle it I don't have a lot to say about that but there certainly are a lot of people that have died to those guys as evidenced by the bones here now the idea here is that um, this is meant to be Firelink Shrine. Small Envoy Banner. 
But we can see here, this is where Koth would have been. And then here's like all the... Yeah, you can see up there where the crow was. And this is kind of fun because if you look at the original design works, um, they show an image of Andre pushing aside the uh, statue here of apparently Grin's wife and Gwendolyn. Um, at least that's who I think that statue might be of. Uh, pushing it to the sides and so, so that you could go here and it looks like there is in this one like something here which is kind of a nice little touch um, but yeah so I think what the implication of this stuff is it's kind of a nice little thing we started out in Lothric and in Dark Souls 3 and then we came into Drang Lake in the Earth and Peak in Dark Souls 2 and then we ended up here fighting the uh, Demon Princes in, um, what does this say, Firelink Shrine? I don't think it does. The Demon Prince, of course, yeah. Um, in the Firelink Shrine, Dark Souls 1. So it's like, it's bringing us back to the beginning. Uh, nice little touch. Although, it is a little bit heavy-handed. Okay, so now, just like the small Lothric banner, which we can see is that kind of circle thing. Now we have the small envoy banner which is a similar circle but yeah it looks different. The small banner used by envoys of Great Lord Gwyn in the days of yore. Face the ringed cliff and hold the banner high to summon facilitators of transport. For the pygmies who took the dark soul the Great Lord gifted the ring city uh, an isolated place at the world's end and his beloved youngest daughter, promising her that he would come for her when the day came. So, this is a new thing. Um, you know, we we learned that, you know, Gwyn had, who I'll just call Fram, um, Guinevere, and then Gwendolyn. And then... Um, we found we met Yorshka, who apparently is another daughter of Gwyn, or she could be like a descendant of a descendant, I guess. And then here it says, a brand new one, but very unambiguous. Um, the great lord gifted the Ring City the Pygmies uh, and his beloved youngest daughter, promising her that he would come for her when the day came. So. It'll be interesting to see what's the story about that. Also, I take issue with one aspect of this too. Well, maybe it's not an issue, but... So yeah, we can see off in the distance the apparent ring city. So I would have imagined that the Chaos Demons would have taken over Anne Orlando after Gwyn left. Remember, because Anne Orlando was like closed off and then guarded by the Iron Golem. And I think that that must have been something of Gwendolyn's doing, not of Gwyn's doing. So the fact that this thing set up by Gwyn is also like guarded by... Chaos Demons is a little bit, um, I don't really know if that makes any sense.
Here's the Ring City. Um, of which there's a lot to speak about. Um, we'll see a lot of these areas that we kind of can go. Um, I and mean, we'll talk about that later, but it is kind of important to point out here, just for the purposes of whatever, that, oh wait, what am I looking at? There we are. Oh, uh, I'm afraid of falling off the cliff here. Because I did one time when I thought I wasn't going to. Um, how about we go like here and then do this. Wow. It's like perfectly not able to be seen by, by, uh, anyway, that thing right below me, there, that, uh, can barely see it is the purging monument which we'll obviously go down and find ourselves the other thing of note is this what is this structure also this thing <laughs> very important. Yeah, I take issue with a number of things here. What What is this? Is this, I mean, we'll talk about this later, but if this is what I think it is, I don't think it can be that. Just from the architecture. Anyway. I'm going to light this flame here so we can just have that, but there's someone to talk to here. That's why I wanted to hit up. Because, yeah. I should really go offline for this because I, uh, let me think, Madeir, <coughs> I might, I might, I might, uh, I might require help with uh, Gwyn, or Quinn, not Gwyn, the final boss, who is not at all Gwyn. Okay, well, he, he's got a long way to go, so let's talk to this person. They brought thee here, did they not? Dost thou the gods serve, or merely that role affect? Um, well, we know my opinion from previous playthroughs of this game. I don't believe that there are any gods. Yes. Yes, of course. How wouldst one such as thee do service to the gods? I have intimate knowledge of thy kind. I know thy want. The dark soul, is it not? Why else wouldst one deign to visit this dung heap? Give rest to thy falsity. I would be an ally to thee. <laughs> That's disturbing. So yeah, it's interesting. He calls it a dung heap, and yet it's not all that. I mean, it's kind of nice. I don't know. If it is the dark soul thou desirest, then seek Filianor's church at the base of the cliff. There will thou the sleeping princess waken. Her slumber is a deceit, a lid covering an overgrown privy, a prop to keep thee from the dark soul of thine desire. Hmm. 
So Princess Filianar is sleeping, but it's just a lie in order to get you to not um, find the Dark Soul, which is what we want. And um, so, no, bro, I'm not Farron. <laughs> Okay, good to note that once he does that, he's completely out of stamina. Yeah, well, I, I'm not gonna go past No stamina. Oh, weird. He did like one more extra move than he usually did. And yet he still had some stamina there. Um, anyway, I'll probably get offline for the next episode because, you know. Um, I don't really need my souls, but. Where are they? Are they right on this? Oh, here. Okay, so, <clears throat> yeah, there's this guy here. And he does his little thing and summons all these, what look like the Ruin Sentinels from Dark Souls 2. Um, there's lots of items up there, we're obviously going to go grab them, so. Okay, that, yeah, there you go. I'll give it to me. I don't know, this is what I do to kill this guy. I don't know if there's like a better, different way to do it, but... Looks like a silver knight. guy that attacks me here. Looks like a silver knight with a big hammer. It's kind of weird. This guy still exists though. There we go. He gives us a divine blessing. Like, which almost implies to me that, I mean, he said Princess Filianor, but, you know, maybe Gwendolyn is the one that was sent here, which would have technically be the youngest daughter, because it was the only daughter. Um, but I think we'll see that, uh, I mean, there are the Hidden and the Divine Blessings, which are Guinevere's. But, I don't know.
This is much easier now that <clears throat> we don't have a million guys shooting at us. I think there's one more thing over here. Oh, it's just budding, budding green blossoms. Nothing back here, right? Wow. Uh, and that guy does come back to life, so, um, yeah. And we do get the ruin set. Helm of the Company of Knights, who were sent to the Ring City on an old king's orders, perhaps Fendrick. The knights sought the Dark Soul, but were so soundly crushed that they had little choice but to swear themselves to the Judicator Giant. The ill-fated company was later immortalized in a dark fable, inspiring the aspect of certain golems in whom their name lived on. So, oh, interesting. So maybe it was older than Vendrick because Vendrick made golems out of those. Well, I think even before Vendrick they were golems, because they were golems in the... Um, in the Lost Bastille, which was part of Ven before kind of Drain Lake, at least I believe. But yeah, apparently that guy is called the Judicator Giant. Oh, please let us be able to look at this now. Okay, there is the Purging Monument. It has all those kind of skulls growing over it, kind of like the Purging Stones. Yeah, all these places we go. It's kind of cool. All right. But the Golem technology was Fendrix. Really, I mean, he was the one that kind of brought golems to, you know, that that arena. Maybe there was people before him, but I thought it was he was the first one, and they certainly were in Fender Castle or in Dragon Lake Castle. Yeah, this is weird. So I believe at a different point, there's a bridge from this building right here to this to the center here, but I'm not sure how that ever comes across. We'll have to check it out once we get there. The other thing that's really kind of cool is that there is a dragon that is sitting here. I wish it was like moving a little bit. This looks like it kind of isn't real, but that's a dragon we will come in contact with later on. Many of us are by the fire, forsaken. I speak of thine kind and mine. Behold this city. We are kindred, but like two eyes which gaze upon the other. Fear not the dark, my friend, and let the feast begin. So these are the locust preachers. We will uh, we will see a bit of them and learn a little bit more about them. But for now, it's sufficiently creepy. We can also see the uh, which you could see in that like mausoleum thing, but I just didn't talk about it. It's the silver knights, uh, much in the same way, and they were in Sen's fortress and whatever. One was a wayfaring knight on an endless forbidden search. Only the abyss granted closure, if not reunion with his beloved. Fear not the dark, my friend, and let the feast begin. So these guys try to encourage people, probably pygmies, to let the dark um, take them. Seems like they're probably followers of Koth in some way, because that's what Koth preached. Or maybe they taught Koth. Who knows? But, um... He said one was the Wayfaring Knight, and only the Abyss brought closure. So I think Artorius, but it says brought him one with his with his beloved. So that almost sounds like maybe Alva or 
or but I mean did Beatrice I don't know I don't know who that might be a new character many of us are by the fire forsaken I speak of thine kind and mine behold this city no. fear and let one was only yeah he was on a search that was the other thing that Bertorius was not really on a search yeah so the pygmies are quite annoying <laughs> they end up pushing you a lot yeah, it's just annoying <laughs> there's also another type that comes up here that is very uh, I don't know I think it's pretty bad game design honestly interesting that one had lightning oh boy Let's see what the purging stones in this game say, or what they say. <coughs> Ash colored stone encasing a skull. Reduces undead curse, build up and cures hollowing. Inhabitants of Londor, the land of hollows, use this secret treasure to feign normalcy. Occasionally a hollow fools even himself and turns on his own kind. Let's use this. Let's become... Let's become, uh... Embered. Unhollowed human all right so I love this um, as you might assume here let me see if I can like get like a better view here This isn't a great one because it's broken. They're not all broken. Okay. Maybe this one. So that looks like Koth or, uh, or, uh, um, oops, uh, Framped for sure. And it is interesting because we get to see the rest of their bodies, which we never have. And this is why I was kind of thinking when I started the Dark Souls 1 playthrough, there was two statues outside the Undead Asylum meeting hall thing. And they looked kind of like this. And I was like, oh, they might, they kind of look like Kath and stuff. But it's interesting. So, I mean, it's certainly possible that. Um, their influence has been felt here. Like, drawing people into the abyss, the, these could all be Koth. This just could be a general one, this could be a new one. This could be one we never even heard of that had similar but differing opinions to Koth. Because they were a race. We saw in the, especially in the ending that I did, in Dark Souls 1, we saw like dozens of them, or at least a dozen of them. And um, in here we see Lap again. And we'll see what he's got to say. Oh, well fancy meeting you here. A true blessing. That we should seek the same place and find ourselves standing here together. I've got the last of my brew. Let's have our own little toast with it. Sigbrow. Now that's odd. Why does he have a Sigbrow? Maybe he's Sig Sigvert. Well, if you recall, especially in our playthrough, that he did take on the role of Sig Sigvert for a period of time in there. So, to my search, and to your duty, and to the joy that lies before us. 
All right, then. Bottoms up. <laughs> Now, I'm off in search of the purging monument. Once I find it, everything will come back to me. Who I was, what I lived for, what my name was, and what terrible grudges I held. I don't know. I just have this feeling that that's the kind of man I was. Oh, don't hold it against me. I only think I was. <laughs> So yeah, the purging monuments right there, of course, too. That's a nice little touch. Now, one side. So yeah. And I think once now that we're in the ringed inner wall, <coughs> I think that'll be good for now. Um, and we'll start exploring the actual ringed city in the next episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.